Today we're going to cover a couple things. I'm going to start off with a lesson on uh, cold weather injuries and shelters. Uh, and then we're going to have some time to uh, get together with people who are in your team to prepare for the weekend. And then we have a nav route, which we're going to do in Waterloo Park. So this is the basic survival lesson. Okay, so about this weekend, some of the training aims are one, learn a basic set of survival uh, skills that you can use under any condition. Uh, teamwork building and esprit de corps. We're going to build some social and task cohesion. It's partially for leadership development. And uh, number four is to push each member's physical and mental abilities in preparation for the life of an astronaut. Five, develop the ability to cope and thrive under any situation, regardless of the difficulty of circumstance, physical, and mental fatigue and stress. And also to build confidence in our abilities. Today's lesson, general survival knowledge, first aid for cold injuries, and improvised shelters. Okay, here's a little, um, not that uh, Mnemonic. Mnemonic or something you can use here. And we're survival. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is from the, uh, the US Army training uh, survival manual. Uh, and so it has survival. Uh, S, size up the situation. Okay, understand your surroundings, what your physical condition is, and what equipment you have. Okay, so that's pretty much your first step when you find yourself in a survival circumstance. Uh, you, use your senses. Okay, don't panic right away. Try and figure out what you have at your disposal, what your situation is, uh, and uh, like understand your circumstances. R is remember where you are. Okay, so don't start moving right away and get lost. V, vanquish fear and panic. Okay, so you don't want to panic under the circumstances. I, improvise. V is the value of living. Okay, and we all kind of get soft living in nice comfortable beds and all that kind of stuff. So we have to kind of train for survival situations. So we do find ourselves in that kind of circumstance. We, uh, of course, don't panic. We know what to do. And we're not troubled by uh, as much by the physical environment we find ourselves in. A is act like the natives using local resources, anything we have at our disposal to aid in our survival. And L, live by your wits, but for now, learn basic skills. So that's the purpose of this weekend. Learn some basic skills and get used to some of the survival environment. Okay, a bit about preparing yourself. Uh, know yourself through training, family, and friends. Take the time to discover who you are on the inside. Uh, strengthen your stronger qualities and develop the areas that you know are necessary to survive. Okay, so it's not just about what knowledge you have on the ground once you get in a survival circumstance, but what you need to prepare. Anticipate fears. Don't pretend you have, uh, that you will have no fear. Begin thinking about what would frighten you the most if you were forced to survive alone. Train in those areas of concern to you. The goal is not to eliminate fear, but to build confidence in your abilities to function despite your fears. And you can imagine how, uh, if you've never been in a circumstance before, if your plane crashed uh, up in uh, northern Canada, you might, uh, you might be afraid, right? So anticipate that fear and learn to work with it. Okay, be realistic. Don't be afraid to make an honest appraisal of the situation. See the circumstances as they are, not what you want them to be. Keep your hopes and expectations within the estimates of the situation. When you go into a survival setting with unrealistic expectations, you may be laying down groundwork for bitter disappointment. Okay? Follow the adage, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. It is much easier to adjust to pleasant surprises about one's unexpected good fortunes than to be upset by one's unexpected harsh circumstances. Okay? And also, be realistic in the sense of, if, uh, if you've never done survival training before, okay, and you find yourself in a, in a plane crash, and you know that the nearest city is maybe 140 kilometers away, okay, that is realistic walking distance for some people over the course of a week or two, okay, but it's maybe not survive, uh, realistic for you. Okay? So you have to know what your own limitations are, and that's part of why we go do training, is to realize what your limitations are so you can make better decisions when you're in the wild. Okay, adopt a positive attitude. Learn to see potential good in everything. Looking for the good not only boosts morale, but it is excellent for exercising your imagination and creativity. Okay. I've seen a lot of people uh, throughout my army training get really, have a negative attitude when you're in difficult circumstances, and it just makes it worse. Okay. The people who are kind of laughing and, and enjoying themselves or 
dealing with the circumstances in a good, in good humor are the ones who tend to do better in the long run. Okay? If you're down, if you think you're miserable and you keep putting that through your mind, okay, that's going to just make it worse for you. So try and adopt a positive attitude. Also, in your, in your survival situation, remind yourself what is at stake. Remember, failure to prepare yourself psychologically to cope with the survival leads to uh, reactions such as depression, carelessness, inattention, loss of confidence, poor decision making, and giving up before your body gives in. At stake is your life and the lives of others who are depending on you to do your share. Okay? So remind yourself what is at stake. Keep yourself going psychologically even though you might be in uh, harsh circumstances. Okay, train through your life, uh, through training and life experiences. Begin today to prepare yourself to cope with the rigors of survival. Demonstrating your skills and training will give you the confidence to call upon them should the need arise. And remember, the more realistic the training, the less overwhelming actual survival will be. Okay. So for this weekend, we don't have to, you know, walk to our campsite two and a half kilometers or something like that. Okay? But the more realistic the training, the better you're going to feel when you get to an actual circumstance. So we're going to try and make it as realistic as possible. Yeah, James? Our campsite is going to be close to the river, right? Yes. You're well, going to bring your canoe and... The side of the river. Yeah. Could I bring your canoe actually? Is that possible? Uh, I don't know how we're going to transport there, but we can talk about that after. I'm not sure. Maybe better do that on a longer trip, but uh, we'll talk about it later. Okay, learn stress management techniques. Uh, people under stress have a potential to panic if they are not well trained and not prepared psychologically to face whatever the circumstances may be. While we often cannot control the survival of circumstances in which we find ourselves, it is within our ability to control our responses to those circumstances. Learning stress management techniques can enhance significantly your capability to remain calm and focused as you work to keep, your, uh, keep yourself and others alive. A few good techniques to develop include relaxation skills, time management skills, assertiveness skills, cognitive restructuring, which is uh, the ability to control how you view a situation. And remember, the will to survive can also be considered uh, to be the refusal to give up. Okay? So a lot of what survival training is, is preparing yourself psychologically for the hardships that you're going to face. Okay, so that was just a brief overview of some of the, I guess, psychology and things you want to be aware of when you're doing survival training. Okay. We're going to talk about uh, some cold weather injuries. Okay, or uh, first aid for cold injuries. The main teaching points are going to be frostbite, advanced cold exposure, snow blindness, dehydration, and shock. And a lot of you took the first aid course last weekend, so you might have covered some of the stuff like shock and dehydration, but I'm not sure if you covered frostbite, advanced cold exposure, snow blindness. Did you talk about any of that kind of stuff last week? Frostbite. Okay. Hypothermia. Hypothermia. Snow blindness was mentioned. Was it? Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't anything. Yeah. It wasn't described or. It defined. was in the section where how to protect yourself from the like sun and reflectiveness. Oh. But it wasn't. Uh, and there's certainly other things that you should be concerned about when you um, are facing cold weather but we just don't have time to go into everything. So if you are going to be traveling and doing more intense winter stuff than what we're doing this weekend, uh, I advise you to uh, look up some of the cold injuries and how to treat them. Okay. In cold weather, you not only have to protect yourself uh, casualty from shock, you must also protect the injured area from the cold. Here are two points to consider about body temperature. First, wounds bleed easily because the cold temperature keeps the blood from clotting and increased bleeding increases the chance of shock. Okay, so you might not have been aware of that. In cold situations, you're going to have more difficulties with bleeding. The second point to consider is wounds open to weather freeze quickly. The body loses heat in the area around the injury as blood soaks the skin around the wound and clothing is usually torn. Therefore, early first aid treatment becomes even more important at low temperatures. Okay? Just emphasizing the point of how important it is to react quickly to any injury you sustain uh, in the 